everyone, it's Tarnished Treasures, and today I have an estate sale haul to share with you. I went to the estate sale right when it opened, and I spent $5 for a bag full of stuff for myself and school. And then uh, I realized when I was at home, I was starting to marinate a chicken, and the recipe calls for a lot of salt. And then I remembered I had pulled a container of salt down at the estate sale, not for myself, but I can use that at school when we watercolor. Uh, if you sprinkle the salt on top of wet watercolor, it makes a nice effect. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go back. It was um, jam packed when everyone was there. The people were very nice. Uh, they were just having this sale because their parents had moved to a different state and they left all the stuff that they didn't want. And what's funny is the um, man's wife said, I don't know why they didn't take care of this. And I said, well, I hope you get to keep the profits. So I went back a little bit later to get my salt and also to just dig a little bit more with no one in the house because I was there for about 45 minutes with no one. And I found some more things. I spent another $10. So all of this cost $15. Uh, first, I'll share the just utilitarian stuff that I am taking to school. This is a full thing, a full thing of salt. This is a brand new thing of Vaseline, and uh, we use that in bowls and plates when the kids are using a bowl or plate to make a mold, and it helps release the clay better. Um, also, you can use lotion. So if I find lotion at a state sale, but the fact that it was brand new, I picked it up. I got three the first time around and four this time of those Bon Maman jelly jars. And this one had cinnamon sugar in it, two had salt, and then two had nothing in them. So I'm going to uh, run these through the dishwasher. But I got all of these powdered mason stains to make underglaze. And they come in uh, little Ziploc baggies, which make it really difficult to get your finger in to measure or to pour. So to put them in a jar, it makes better sense. And I had taken in three or four jars that I had used and washed, but I still need a few more. So I like the fact that they kind of are all the same now. Um, so I have seven. These are great, I just think, for decorations in your own kitchen if you're just trying to make like a little cook's kitchen and put some herbs that you've dried in there because they really do hold a lot. And I like the pattern on the top. One of them also has more of a sea salt or a, a coarser salt and I'm actually going to take that just leave it in there to use it the same way as this. I've always used this salt for the watercolor but I'll see what the um, bigger chunks of salt do. I also want to be on the lookout for tools and I have a few tools in my classroom um, but I want to look out for like saws and blades that are sharper, rasps, and just have different sizes of screwdrivers. So there were just these small handheld ones. I believe in my room, I've got two long ones, a Phillips and a straight head. But now these are, some are thinner, some are shorter, um, thicker for the Phillips, thinner for the Phillips. And most of this stuff to me, I think about the salt, these empty glass jars, like I think all of that stuff would have just been thrown away. Maybe this would be donated. So I was happy to get it to be able to use it in my classroom. The other thing I picked up was this empty jar or canister of Earl Grey. And it's, you know, the cool Harney and Sons tin. I'll store something in the classroom with that. And I have a few other tins as well. So they might look nice lined up with um, different colors. Just like the, these kind of coordinated with the little collection. I also need sandpaper. Um, because I left most of the sandpaper in my um, old classroom and I just pick it up at estate sales when it's a fill a bag. So this one's a really coarse belt sander uh, or you know for a belt sander and I can just cut it up but then when my husband saw it he said he'd take it and that is a little coarse for what I need in school. I think it's 36 <laughs> and this is I think 220 and there's a couple sheets so that I'll take it to school little sandwich containers and I asked my daughter because she was with me I said look at these and figure you know tell me what I could store in that at school and she said chalk pastels oil pastels and I said yes I'm glad I brought you so there were two of them okay so all of that 
is definitely for school. And then some of the other stuff might go either way. Um, last thing I need is another one of these little Denison boxes, but I just hate leaving it there when I know it's not really gonna add anything to my total price. So I'll take that into school and maybe the kids will enjoy that if they're doing an assemblage. It looks like a miniature book. I love the older clothespins and some, like this one I found in the kitchen, it's very soft on the edges and it's got a darker patina, probably just from the oils of the kitchen. Whereas these were in a um, clothes basket and uh, probably this one was never used. But I recognize them from their little spring and they're just put together so much better than the ones I've bought recently, like at the dollar store. And I use these at school. Um, the kids can write their name on it and then put that clip on their bag so they know which clay sculpture is theirs when it's all wrapped up in the same type of grocery bag that's opaque. They're good for little chip bags to close them. And I feel like I always think I have enough and then I still need more. If you open up a bag of corn in the freezer, this is great to keep it closed, chocolate chips. So I got a whole handful of those. I did not take all they had. They also had some of the really cool old older style, which is nice to wrap trim around. So now I'm thinking, oh, I should have gotten those. Hindsight, right? I'll probably find more. Um, three guides. And when I was in the one bedroom, I looked up and I said, I feel like if they had any of the guides, they would be there. And they didn't. They were in the next bedroom down low and just something like I didn't have time to look at when everybody was crowded in there. I have a flowers one and I've had this one before because I remember the student using that picture in their sketchbook. Rocks and minerals. This one's my favorite besides the mushroom one and seashells of the world, which I've also had. But they're great for collaging. Um, we do a lot of mood boards in ceramics class where the kids will pick color swatches and images that are related to what they want to make. And these are great for that. But I also like them too, so I don't know where they're gonna wind up. I found this old journal, we'll say, and it is filled with handwriting in ink and in pencil, and I think a lot of it is quotes and poetry, but it's filled. So I was really happy to find that. So that one definitely is sticking with me. This was a really good find. Um, so the first time around when I only spent $5, I got um, sterling silver jewelry, this brand new thing of Wright's silver polish, which is the kind that I used or use so it's brand new. It's at least $5 on Amazon. And I got this brand new unused anthropology volcano candle that has a price tag of $14. So right there, I was like, okay, I have paid for this $5 haul. Then when I went back and spent the $10, I still feel like I got a good deal, but I was really happy that first time around. And this was the first thing I picked up in the house. Um, and it's that volcano scent which is that classic anthropology scent in a pretty little iridescent jar. Um, so the second time around, I did find another anthropology candle. How cute is that for fall? Like it looks like a little acorn. That one has a $24 price tag on it, but it has been burned a tad. I wouldn't know how to describe that. They are calling it rustic wood and tobacco. I'm guessing that's short for tobacco. It's folly. I'll burn it. The first time around, I carried some things in this little box. So I just included it in my pile. I'll take that to school to organize some things. There were tons of nice baskets at this house. So I hope somebody who needs them goes and gets some. There was this box at the bottom of a stack of linens. And I got this gorgeous hanky that is silk. So delicate. Three of these napkins. Now the first time around I found two upstairs on the bed and another reason why I wanted to go back is I thought there have to be more somewhere. So I found one 
down in the basement. So now I have three, but at least they're all together. And it's got this beautiful edge. And just look at all that detailing with the way it was cut to like miter the seam. Beautiful, I can't wait to use those on the table. And then there was this sweet little pouch. And I love these because they can hold a set of little napkins, not, not really that size, but a different set. So I have one other, but they could hold anything. And I just, I love, I love the white linens. Like look at how that's put together to give it the height to be stacked up. And this I also picked up for school to measure those mason stains and the Gersley borate because it's a ratio and this will help keep it accurate for the whole. But that was the thing everyone was after when they got into the house was jewelry. It was wild. And pretty much none of these match because I'm sure the people were grabbing and there's some pretty nice stuff in here. Like I would have kept these to give to my daughter as a matching set, but most of them are singles. So I'll just be zoomed in real close. This one is a made in Italy sterling chain. Uh, there were two sets of pearls that I was able to get that are um, that are matching. I, I knew they were real pearls. They have sterling backings. Even the gold one says sterling. So that was a nice pair. And then I did pick up um, this do you call them gray? Gray pearls? And they have uh, sterling backings as well. And then these are all the really pretty ones that are just singleton. So I guess I could craft with these and put them on those jars, but I really would have loved to have the match instead. This one is a little starfish with some iridescence in there. And uh, they're all they're all marked. That one I found the second time around, marked on the back. I really liked that one and I thought my daughter would like it too. Well, I guess she could wear mismatch, right? <laughs> 925, a little Celtic inspired one. Oh, same here. A hoop and I don't know, maybe a little amber. Again, it's got the Celtic too. So wherever they bought these, I'm sure they paid a decent price for them. They're really nice. Too bad, most of them are singletons. So that's my estate sale haul. I hope you enjoyed seeing it. Um, not a ton of vintage, but a lot of practical things.